There are people who believe that they're worthy simply because of their deeds. And in the world, that works. The things that you do make you worthy of gaining favor. In the world, that works. You know, you go to Stanford, get that degree from Stanford. You got that prestige behind your name. You become worthy of something. It opens doors in certain places. When they see that, oh, you went to Stanford, my alma mater. Come on in, let me put you up a little bit higher. In the world, your deeds work. But within the word, it's not so. Jesus said this in Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 to 23. You don't have to look. You know the story. He says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom. But they're going to make all kinds of claims saying, Lord, did not prophesy, did not heal. And he's going to say, I never knew you. Your deeds don't make you worthy. It is not the deeds that make you worthy. But what it is, is your relationship with the Lord that makes you worthy. Go to John. Come to John with me, chapter 6. Go to verse 66. John 6, 66 to 69 say this. This is right after Jesus told a crowd of disciples, you have to eat of my flesh and drink of my blood if you want to have any part to do with me. And the people's response was this, man, that's a hard word. And we get to verse 66. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. Then Jesus said to the twelve, do you also want to go away? But Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life, 69. And we have come to believe and know that you are the Christ, the son of the living God. The twelve were in a relationship with Christ. After walking with this man for three years, they've come to know him and to believe he was who he claimed to be. Everybody else in the crowd didn't have that relationship. They were only with it for the prestige. Like, what's going on? Oh, we following this man, Jesus. Come on, come on. You'll get some free food out of this. Buffet style. He feeding thousands everywhere he go. Oh, you got a sick cousin? Come on. But then he said, it's all good, but unless you eat of my flesh, drink of my blood, can't have no part of this. All right, right there, I can't get with that. I'm a... My mama's calling me. Street lights coming on. I got, I, I got, I got, I got to go pay the, the registration on my car. It's about due. Light, light, light bills due. So uh, I catch you when you come back around. You're worthy because of your relationship, not the deeds. There's nothing that you can do that will get you eternal life but it's through that relationship put it like this Isaiah says that our righteousness is as filthy rags so what good are we to say that we qualify to make it into eternity when our righteousness cannot stand on its own it's a relationship I remember when I was assigned my background investigator her name was Kimberly Mounts she called me up said alright Mr. Hill we got a uh, I want to sit down and meet with you, talk about some things. Part of the police process was the background interview was a two-part. They gave you this test, about 153 yes or no questions. Like, have you ever did drugs? And they list all the different kind of drugs. You do this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. You got to say yes or no. If you said yes to anything, you had to write an explanation. They wanted dates, events, how it started, how it ended, they didn't want nothing general. You had to be very specific on everything. They asked about your finances. Were you ever late on some payments? Yes, please explain. <laughs> How's your credit? Uh, not too good, please explain. <laughs> they asked you everything, and everything that you know was a ding, you had to explain it. And one thing the guy said when he came out and said, look, your past is your past. Be honest. 
He kept saying that. Be honest. There's a reason why he said, be honest, because he said all the people that were background investigators were retired police officers. And so they began to learn how to really pick out someone who's honest and dishonest. He said, look, if you're not being honest, they'll catch you. And if they catch you being dishonest, that's it. End of the process for you. And so I was like, you know, I had to sit there and just talk about my finances because, you know, after college and stuff, my credit got kind of messed up and uh, missed some payments. You know, I got a couple of tickets <laughs> here and there. I had to write that down and explain it. And one thing Kimberly told me when she hit those dings, she said, did you clear that up? I said, yes, I cleared it up. I paid that fine. She said, what about this right here? You see, you got this ticket right here. Did you clear it up? Yes, I paid that off. It's cleared up. She said, get me proof that you cleared it up. I had one ticket I didn't pay yet. <laughs> See, because then the lady got the metro rail. You know, they got the metro rail, so I, I had to get home because my car was broke and I had to catch the metro rail, but I didn't have enough money to buy the ticket. <laughs> so I said, you know, I'm gonna take my chances. And it just so happened that, you know, the, the transit authority is up there writing tickets. And so I said, look, I gotta get home, just write me the ticket. So I got the ticket, forgot about the ticket, but it came up on that background check. And she said, what did you do about that? I said, oh, uh, well, um, I forgot about that. She said these three words, you need to clear that up. Before you move on any further in this process, you need to clear that up. When you think about your work for the Lord and you look at the things in your past that are unresolved, you gotta ask yourself, did I clear that up? I need to clear that up. There might be some unresolved stuff in your past that you need to clear up before you can continue in your work. Let me give some examples just to see if I can cover the spread of the congregation right now. You might have some sexual issues that you need to clear up. You might be single, still active. You need to clear that up. You might be married. Still active with someone other than your spouse. You need to clear that up. You just might be mean. Mean to your family, mean to your friends, mean to your co-workers, mean to your neighbors. You need to clear that up. You might have a drug issue. You need to clear that up. You might drink a little too much alcohol that causes you to lose control of your members. You need to clear that up before you move on in the process so that you can work and work effectively and not get caught in some scandal, there are certain things that you need to clear up. <laughs>